Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I just wanted to uh, check before we get started in a minute or two uh, that you can sort of, you can hear us loud and clear and you can see the slides on the screen. Please just let us know um, if you can or you think you've got some problems. Just, uh, you can either send us a little message in the chat window or in the questions box. Uh, you should be able to see in the um, GoToWebinar control panel. Um, just want to check that you can hear us loud and clear and um, before we get started um, in a minute or two. You can, yeah, okay, great. So yeah, thanks for letting us know. Thanks Rod, thanks Naomi, thanks for letting us know. Um, we're just coming up to 11 now by my, by my clock. Thanks Emma. Um, where are you joining, joining us from today? So uh, pleased to say we, we're sort of live to you now from Birmingham, sunny Birmingham in the Crowd Control HQ offices. Um, where are you joining from today before we get started? Let's see who we have on board. Barnstable Devon, thanks James. Good to have you on, thanks. Katie in London, thanks Deb. Thanks, good to have you on. Rod Chipping Norton in West Oxfordshire, good to have you on. Emma, hi Wickham. Taylor Wimpy, different industry, keen to learn. Great to have you on. I think there'll be some good insights that we're going to share today. I think you can learn from. And so I'm just looking at the time. I think um, I think we're pretty much on 11 now. If people are still joining, that's fine. They can they can join when they're when they're on. So yeah, let's get started. So thanks for joining everyone. Amazing to have you on board. We've got a really interesting uh, topic for you today um, and I'm joined by a great guest and we'll, uh, I'll introduce you very shortly. So today webinar is around uh, how goals uh, soccer centres keep social media fans engaged across their 46 different locations across the UK. And I'm super pleased to say that I've got Curry joining me here so you can see our faces here. Uh, do you want to say hi Curry? Hi guys, how you doing? You okay? <laughs> Great to have you on, Curry. Um, so yeah, welcome. This is me. This is Curry. Um, for anyone who hasn't joined us uh, before for a webinar or it's the first time you're sort of interacting with Crowd Control HQ, just going to spend 30 seconds just to introduce who we are. So Crowd Control HQ, we're a UK-based social media management software uh, company, and we support many different organisations in the UK with their social media marketing and communications requirements. Also, their social customers, social media customer service requirements, um, organisations where they have an emphasis on uh, social media compliance. We can help you, help you guys as well. And uh, like I said, we're fully UK based, so uh, with Crowd Control HQ, you get that sort of extra special care and support because our our team are fully based here in in the Birmingham office. And we work with many different organisations in the UK, some public sector, some private sector. And I've just shared a few of the other sort of leisure and other businesses that we um, that we work with here on this slide just to give you a sense of uh, yeah what we do and who we who we work with so Corey I'm going to pass it over to you for the for the good stuff if you want to want to take the reins let me um, just pass the control to you here and you Brilliant. can uh, control the slides there we go should be all yours Corey Yep. Oh, so um, you might just have to click the button that says uh, share, share slides. Okay, yeah, we're good. You can see it now. Yep, brilliant. Perfect. Perfect. So you can see my screen now. I think so. Yeah, can you do it? Can you just uh, full screen, full screen the slides? Yep. Just so that we can see the, see the max. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. I think that looks good. Thanks. Perfect, brilliant. No, uh, brilliant to be here. Thanks very much. Um, I think it's going to be it's really good to get to kind of get these conversations learned from other uh, other kind of leisure centres and other just centres in general. So, um, kind of what I'll discuss, I won't bore you too much in a bit of an intro, but um, you know, a bit about myself, what a bit about goals, uh, what it is for goals, why why it is social such a kind of moving forward platform for ourselves, why we use crowd control to to manage that as well. A bit about engagement scoring and why that's important and again a wee bit about reporting the content and put it into practice and, and tactical they kind of all tie in together um understandably so 
about goals, if, if you've never seen us or, or heard about us or even played with us, we're a five-a-side leisure centre um, business where we would like to consider ourselves the leading operator in the UK with 46 premier clubs all kind of scattered around um, 43 uh, down south in England and three in the north in Scotland. We've also got some US uh, clubs as well, got a couple over there and uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to roll that out um, to our neighbours across the sea as well. Um, we have around about 140k weekly players, that's ranging from five a side, we've now got eight a side as well, uh, seven a side, 11 a side teams as well. Um, we're obviously FA accredited, so our pitches are the best that you can play on, according to the FA. And it got, again, you, you know, it's a great experience to play on pro turf pitches, which is exclusive to, to goals in particular. And we have around about 4,500 leagues, which are a range of different players. You know, it ranges from you know, the, the, the best players, the really competitive, to those that just want a really good game with five of their mates, maybe that's colleagues. So what is social for goals? Now, I won't, I, there's a lot of facts there. You know, if you can read that, perfect. But social for ourselves is really, really important, given that football uh, is at the heart of a lot of people nowadays. And it's a, using social media as a platform to talk about football is, is massively important. So you can see there, Twitter is a 7 million strong UK audience of football fans, and that number is only growing into 2019. You know, we can see that Twitter has had a bit of a decline, but we can still see that for instant news or for anything that happens online, um, Twitter is kind of the go-to place for football fans. And the same goes for um, watching football live. Um, there was a recent list of statistics with Amazon now buying into the sports scene and Netflix looking into that as well. They're now looking at broadcasting live. So we might actually end up seeing a shift with um, football now moving to you know, an online perspective or a social perspective. So it's really important that we keep track of that. And again, 72% of football fans use Twitter on a daily basis with 85% of Twitter users watching at least two hours of football a week. So it's clearly uh, football has a, a massive impact on people, certainly in the UK. Now, with crowd control, um, to give you a bit of an insight, we've got 46 clubs, but we like to keep it quite locally. We like to keep the the content local. We like to, to let the clubs take control of that. But at the same time, we need to use crowd control so that clubs can plan ahead. You know, they need to make sure that they're getting the content out live. They need to make sure that the, the content is appropriate to their audience. And that's why we use crowd control to make sure that any posts, they can plan ahead. They can schedule it in. They can sit back and let crowd control kind of take the, the reins on that, that aspect. Uh, and the same goes for their analytics. Now, there's no point in just scheduling their posts just to go anywhere at any time. It's really important that they get their audience engaged. So they, they, they use crowd control to pull those analytics through, check the best times, check when um, you know their audience are interacting with them. And then they'll say, right, OK, they have the days that we should post this content or there might be a particular post that's done really well. And then they can take some results from that and say, right, next time that we go ahead and proceed with this sort of post, that's what we're going to we're going to look at, and we're going to try and time it and base it around that interaction state. You could say, again, it's strategic opportunities. So, crowd control, um, if you haven't used it already, is obviously it's obviously got um, some really good tools in terms of scheduling content. It shows you the opportunities or the hashtags relevant to certain days. Um, I'm trying to think of I'm, hashtag the environmental day. I'm going to use that one. Might say a post about that later. But again, uh, crowd control, a really good feature where they hashtag or they take certain dates out that are important or relevant to that particular day, you could say. And again, that works for us because there might be an opportunity there that we might have missed or we've not seen in certain calendar reports or uh, in terms of our planning for the for the year, we might have missed a, a certain date that is, is, is just so ad hoc that it doesn't happen very often, but Crowd Control being able to capture that. And again, that allows us when we're looking at our weekly planning to say, right, that's an opportunity there. How can we how can we post? How can we create content around that particular day? From no matter how weird it is, we had one where it was a dog. It was Happy Dog Day or something. Um, I'll, I'll need to refresh my memory on that. But we've seen it as a funny opportunity. We thought that's brilliant. You know, it's such a you know everybody loves dogs. And how can we how can we capture that element um, of football and and dogs and, and make it sort of funny? Um, and we use the ball element. You know, football has footballs. Dogs like chasing balls put two and two together and it fit really well uh, for that particular strategic uh, day and again it's used for social listening so it's really important that we 
with it, with our diverse network um, across all 46 of our clubs, it's really important that we understand what our customers are saying about us, what future customers are saying about us, and also what um, the, the kind of world of football is saying about us. So you can pigeonhole that into three different categories, customers, future customers, and then obviously our um, you know, football environment, grassroots, and just general in you know, Premier League, La Liga, whatever it is. And it's important that we capture all three of them so we can put all three together. We can put it into one box and say, right, okay, there's where we're marketing to. That's that's we're gonna put that marketing material there. We're gonna put that post into that that target market and, and you know we're just gonna put this ad hoc content into here. And that's the way that we would work it. And social listening is a really good aspect for us because well we know what it's like socials are very wide world in its own it's got its own uh, everybody's got an opinion nowadays and it's very important that we understand exactly what's been said about us so that we can either one resolve it quickly two make sure that we capture the hearts of those football fans and three just essentially keep up with trends and that's really really important with football given that it's changing so quickly now engagement scoring um i don't know if many of you you use this often um but engagement scoring for us was really important because it's very easy to get caught in numbers. It's very easy to say that you have X amount of followers, or X amount of likes, you have X amount of shares. It's, it, when you start to take everything out from social media, it starts to get very overwhelming and you really don't understand you know, what, what are we looking for? What's our target here? What, how many likes do we want? Or do we want shares? You know, What's getting us the best reach? Is it impressions that we're, we're, we're kind of looking for? All of that data put into one is, is, is it gets really difficult to manage. So to give our teams, uh, our leisure centres or at our clubs, a better understanding of how social media works, we decided to create a score based on their engagement. That meant that there wasn't so many facts and numbers getting pulled at them. And it also meant that they could sort of quantify their, their social media interaction into one particular you know, number or percentage or rock, you could say. So I, I can't give it, maybe Dan could um, give away the, the kind of coding later for that. And maybe that's something we could share because it actually was crowd, con uh, crowd control that worked with us on that. But the, the algorithm that works, it allows us to compare each club to one another. So whenever we're sharing best practice between clubs or showing a particular um example of a, from a club rather than saying you know, they had a thousand likes and they had 200 shares another club might have had a thousand shares and 200 likes so rather than comparing them that way we decided right what's most important for us we'll use that as you know we'll weight that five points what's second most important right we'll weight that four points three points two points one point and then that gets sorted <laughs> that gets a uh, kind of calculated out i'm not good at the math so i won't try and describe that but it allows the clubs then to kind of share best practice and say, right, that's how well I'm doing because that's what we're weighted on. Again, scoring based on relevancy. So we score against, there's there's no point in us scoring against competitors because it's a very diverse market. Now, again, we use the example of a, a certain competitor might have, you know, a, a huge amount of likes or they might have a huge following, yet they don't get, very good engagement whereas we've got less followers less likes but we get very good engagement so it's not very fair that we compare ourselves to that competitor so we compare ourselves internally so that we can allow ourselves to to improve internally rather than looking at it on an outside basis because we obviously want to be leaders in that market we want to be leaders in that um industry so it's really important that we score internally it allows better insights for the for the whole of the estate, so comparisons can be better. As I said, it's dead easy to get caught up in all these numbers, all these likes, all these shares. So let's just use one particular scoring system that allows us to manage it across all 46 clubs. And it also allows us for then future development. It then bottom, bottom performers can say, right, okay, I have only X amount of um, scoring against the top performer. Let me look at that top performer and how I compare on that. And that's what we'll look at here. Um, and this is how we do it. So a very simple uh, sort of graph. Um, we obviously take the analytics from crowd control. We, we pull the report. That then goes into another report. And it allows us to, to score based on what we've weighted each of the, the interactions. So, you know, I think 
shares was weighted five because we want more people to share the content we want more people to see it and then likes maybe four uh, you could say comments are weighted three points etc so in this particular example we send this out every monday um, every club gets to see this and it allows the teams to really get an idea of right okay these are the top five performers on facebook and twitter um, they're doing well what are they doing better and these are our bottom performers, right? Okay, so if I'm in that list and I'm seeing myself, you know, maybe I'm goals out on, and I'm saying, right, I've only got 4% of the engagement that goals Aberdeen did on Facebook. How do I get within that top five and get a better percentage rate compared to goals Aberdeen? So what I might do is I'll take this information away. I'll then go to, you know, maybe my reporting stage uh, within crowd control and say, right, okay, here's what I've got. Now let me take a look at Goals Aberdeen's Facebook. Oh, right, okay, I see that they've got, you know, num posts daily or they post um, twice a day or whatever it is, and I can see that that's the content that's working for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that content for Goals Aberdeen, I'm going to replicate it, and then I'm going to wait for next week to see what my percentage has it increased, has it decreased? Are Goals Aberdeen still the top five engaging within the company? And if they're not, it's the same cycle. Right, okay, here's the new top five they are the, the top performer how can I then um, compare myself to them what content can I take from there and you'll see on the right hand side we've got a kind of wee section where we just kind of comment on it based on um, what we've seen so that it gives a, a, the club a quick glance you know you'll know yourself if you are in the leisure industry it's so fast paced it's so quick you, you don't have a lot of time to sit down and really get to grips with what's happening around you and you know sometimes social can be put on the back burner although you understand how important it is so it's really important that for for myself um when i'm reporting on this that i give the clubs a really quick glance at what's important for them what's the what's the insights um, and is there anything that i can take from you know my comments that they can then work on and you see their goals aberdeen and goal sheffield they were the top performers so we then report on every club underneath that so every club is then compared to goals aberdeen and goals sheffield because in our weighting system our engagement scoring system they were the top performers and then you'll see you know goes goes on fourth um and we use the only the top five based on you know they guys are i think it's better that we focus on the bottom performers because it should be a competition you know, who, let me get out of this top 10, let me get this bottom 10, I want, I want to get to the top five at least, or at least become middle table, and if the clubs want to see it, we can show the whole table um, from, you know, one to, to 46, but again, this is a very quick oversight, it's very quick to do, and the crowd controls analytics goes straight into the report and it fills it out very, very quickly. This is this is really interesting, Corey, we find actually a lot of organisations that try to do these internal um league tables and like just to get that sense of competition going and it's really effective um, just to instill you know like that sense of competition and get people trying to outdo each other definitely and it's, it's, it's always it's fun competition at the end of the day and yeah. i think it's it's very we look at a competition i don't know if, if you guys do it as well we always look at your competition and um, you always try and compare yourself to them but sometimes it's better to work internally and say right okay let's create an internal competition and it's all fun at the end of the day there's no there's, there's no malice in it it's all about right okay that's yeah. what they're doing great that's a great idea and it's sharing best practice at the end of the day rather than saying this is what you should be doing from x competitor because then it can be sort of swung well we can't do that because of whereas yeah. if you've got clubs that are doing really well they can say all right okay they're doing it so now i can as well how did yeah. they do it and communicate so awesome. um and again you know talking from from our reporting anal anal ugh, analytics for ourselves is, is really really critical in our strategic planning not just for weekly for clubs but in terms of ourselves so that we can oversee the whole estate and see what's working what's not um because it can be very it, it's very easy to get lost in numbers you know i'll come back to that a, a million times over so it's if you quantify it um within a total number and then you know work it in a monthly or a yearly average then it works out a lot better so i'll, I'll sort of explain this very quickly um because it's a lot to take in there but essentially what we did was we looked at a reporting before and we saw that it was just you know you see facebook and twitter there are, are separated we've now got instagram and in there as well but you've got post likes comments clicks shares engagement and reach 
Um, then for Twitter, you know, it's almost the exact same for likes, replies, clicks, retweets, engagement, impressions. Now, when you break them all down, it's a lot, a lot of numbers, a lot of reporting, and a lot of people don't want to see that when you're trying to spread this far and wide because they're really not interested, to be fair. They just want to know how well are we doing. If you're not a social media guru or you're not interested in it, but you, you still have some sort of, you know, insight into it, you just want to see what's going on, then it's better that you take a toll. So what we did was we took the whole of the estate, we took our yearly monthly, you know, P1 there will be January, P2 will be, will be February, February. We then looked at a monthly change, so we compared it monthly, so we can see, right, okay, is there growth or have we seen a, a small decline in any of our st statistics? And then you've got a versus last year as well, because, you know, we always want year-on-year -year improvements, don't we? And, and certainly with, with um, social media increasing, with a lot of marketers looking at social media as the new marketing platform, or usually it might actually be their standalone platform it's really important that we look at last year and, and always look to improve so i'll take facebook here as a, a quick example from p1 you see that the post likes took a small decline which isn't really great you know we, you might look at that as a standalone and go oh no you know our likes aren't working or what's going wrong are people not engaging with it do we need to look at the content as a whole how do i what how, what do i need to do here to fix that However, if you look at your total engagement, we're actually on an increase. We're actually on a 57% increase for the last month. And then year on year, we're a 39% increase. So again, you have to look at it and go, right, okay, that, that that's working well. Um, we, where can we break it down? What, what network isn't working here? So rather than looking at the Facebook and Twitter and its own, you then look at it as a whole, and then you can break it down from there and break it down again until you find out the root problem of it, and then you can continue to improve. So very simple. Um, a uh, bit of uh, reporting there that we use and again that's just uh, for ourselves to look at whenever we need to when it becomes in the next month we can look it's really at interesting though Corey I think you made a good point about <clears throat> looking at so or, or, or not not looking exclusively at one metric or one statistic because you said total number of likes was down but the overall engagement is up and the total clicks is up so I guess actually that's more valuable than uh, perhaps the metric that it didn't, uh, that had decreased, and it, you're not just um, focusing on you know the the sort of cliche vanity metrics, just like followers and likes. You're actually looking at the the valuable uh, metrics, you know, around the engagement and uh, like clicks and things like that. Yeah, and I think what you've said there is exactly that, Dan. You know, vanity. It's a very um, it's very easy to look at your you know these metrics in the individual state and go, oh, we want more, we want more, we want more. But sometimes yeah. that's not always better. Sometimes it's better yeah. looking at the metrics in a whole and think, right, okay, well, actually, just engagement in general. It may just be that people prefer just to comment now, and and we're actually maybe yeah. it's a better, it's like a discussion. Maybe that's that's what our content's producing. And then when you're looking at your strategic plan and say, right, okay, we need to focus more on content that's creating um, comments because we want people to discuss what's happening in the football yeah. world. Um, but yeah, a lot you can take out of that, and a lot, you know, I could sit and talk for hours on this, as as we do <laughs> every yeah. month uh, when we're sitting internally. But again, you know, if, if if that's something you can take away, then fantastic. It works for ourselves. Maybe it'll work for you guys. Now, um, when I was sort of uh, when Dan had sort of emailed and and we'd spoke about um doing this webinar, a lot of the kind of discussion was around content. Um, uh, Dan had, you know, we'd been highlighted and sort of. Made me made us blush that our content, the content that we're producing, <laughs> is really good, which is great. That's what we're looking for. So, um, I've just taken a few examples here. Um, I won't bore you. I won't bore you too much. But we have obviously the local element is a huge factor for us. When we're sitting at head office, there is no way for us to, you know, produce the same content as what they can do at the clubs. The clubs have got access to the pitches. They've got access to the actual real life players playing football they've got access to the teams behind you know they're the they're the driving force at the end of the day of what goes online and they, they they're the face of the brand they're the ones that are really driving goals um into the next level you could say now these three examples here are celebrities they've came to 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 play uh, the one in the left that's Damari Gray and that was at goals Leicester uh, top right there, that's uh, Arsenal's defender Mustafi, um, and I'm actually unsure of the player down below. I just know he's a boxer, um, but he plays football in his spare time. Um, so uh, that was a goals Bradford. So in the at Bradford, he was a he was a kind of local celebrity. So 
again, it's coming back to that local element. Now, you take away Damari Gray and take away Mustafi for the time being, when the, the celebrity in the bottom right there, it goes Bradford. That's a really good um, kind of driver of local engagement. You know, they're, they're local players that play week in, week out, will know who that is. The people that are liking the Facebook page will know who that is because it's all location-based. And again, what it does is it, it's a mixture of two sports there. You've got boxing and football. And again, that we can then share that at HQ, across our HQ channels, to say, here's what football is for the fans. Here's what it does. You know, it's not just a sit standalone sport. It is a... Um, it's a mixture of exercise, fitness, social element, but it's also a chance to kind of break away from your usual day-to-day -day routine. So for this particular example, that 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 um, boxer does boxing day in, day out, and wants to break it up a bit, so now comes to play football. Coming back to that grassroots element, everybody loves a game of football, and that's what we like to talk about. And again, you know, I don't think I need to say too much on Tamari Gray and um, Mustafi, two players in their own right, ren renowned around the world. Um, so it was really great, you know, that they were coming in to play football. And it shows that, you know, we're they're the, so you could sort of use them as ambassadors um, for your brand and say, you know, they, they, came, they came and played football with us. And that's what we want to show, that um, our teams are willing to take anyone in. And it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity or just a five-a-side footballer that just likes to play week in, week out. We, are, we welcome anyone that wants to play the sport and that's what our content's all based around and you'll see here that's the content in practice so I've taken a few examples uh, from our top five performers again that's the, that, that engagement score and allows me to then look at right who is the top performers and when I was pulling this, this sort of presentation together all I did was pull the, the Monday's report and say right there's the top five and took Goals Bradford, Sheffield, Southampton, Black Country you know, took their examples just went onto their Facebook page, Twitter page and had a quick look and you'll see there this is the kind of content that our fans like to see um bradford in the top left there um, they were getting some new pitches laid we've got pro turf which is exclusive at goals so they were in particular promoting that that element because the, the pitches that they had before were not worn out but a lot of customers had said look we need some new ones so it was they they uh, the video that they did um they spoke to the fans and said, we've listened to you, you know, this is what you wanted, here it is, have a look at it. And video content is obviously a massive element in social nowadays. A lot of people want to see a video over maybe a standalone picture. So they took, they capitalised that really well. Emojis, it's it's, a, it's an in thing, it's the, the end thing. So they added some emojis in there and then some relevant hashtags. And you can see there, you know, the, the, the stats don't lie. Um, and again, with Sheffield, Sheffield are really good um, on Twitter. They have, um, Billy Sharp, who's Sheffield United striker, prolific striker, still plays week in, week out. Um, so obviously known in their local area. He, Billy Sharp, he does coaching in their local area. So what Sheffield have done is they've capitalised on that local element by promoting not only a celebrity, but promoting a their, their coaching service. And it's without, you know, I think what's great about this to sort of post on Twitter there is it's not... They're not promoting as in saying, come to us and buy our product. What we're doing is um, we're, we're shaping content around, here's what's happening with the products that people are coming and using for us. And that's the difference there. They're not promoting buy our product. They're promoting, here's what real people are doing with our product. And that's what um, we're trying to encourage more of. Um, I think we're all, you know, you'll know yourself when you're scrolling through your social media feeds. It's very, very easy to get lost um, and content so people are quite direct with it and when someone sees an ad you know you'll see it yourself you'll be sitting watching a video an ad will come up oh skip skip you're waiting for that skip button so <laughs> rather than having content that looks like that we've incorporated content that just blends into the news feed if someone's scrolling you would have no idea that it's an ad and technically that's what it is right there it's a it's promoting a product without actually going out and saying buy it and again another few examples there i won't um, boy, with it, we do a lot of competitions uh, involving Billy Sharp again. And Black Country's one was great. You know, they were getting a new pitch, and they they directly they promoted it directly to the fans, saying, "We've listened to you. You know, you're the footballers. We want you to play. We listen to you. We'll get new pitches." And they added the wee comedy element in there. If you get the chance, have a wee watch that video. It's it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and again, content. So you get the content from your local sites. Um, they're the ones that are the driving force, they're the face of the brand. Again, come back to the face, real life customers playing football week in and week out. 
we need to look at it as a HQ site. So we're thinking we're sitting in the head office. We don't have access to these pitches. We don't have access to all this content that the clubs get. We don't have access to the customers. So what can we do? And that's where I'll come back to that crowd control using those um, hashtags, those relevant opportunities in the next month. And we look at, right, that's what's coming up. What? How do we put two and two together? How do we take football? How do we take that tactical opportunity? And how do we put it together? You know, World Health Day. It's fun fact Friday, you could say. It was all about um, playing fives. You know, it's, it's, it's understandably exercise is good for your, uh, good for your body. Um, we looked at World Environmental Day. And that what we did actually is we were actually removing plastic from our clubs at the time. So before even this um, hashtag was announced, we were already in the processing stage of removing plastic. Uh, mm -hmm. We obviously had straws and everything. All the straws were getting removed from nightclubs. And it was all over the news. Um, so ironically um, when this hashtag came up it was we thought well why not shout about it this is what we're doing anyway so we might as well as, as tie it in with that tactical opportunity uh, world cup massive opportunity for us uh, if you're if you're a football fan the world cup was in fact for any business actually the world cup is a huge huge um opportunity for for capitalizing on a, a sort of standalone audience that they're, they're, they're watching it anyway so we, we promoted a lot of the games and uh, again promoted our products with that with some tactical gifts and then Christmas uh, unfortunately we're coming up to Chris, Christmas again it's oh, already uh, I know, I know. Uh, so we'll probably look at Christmas again just now well actually we'll, uh, we'll probably start planning for Christmas right now which is kind of a uh, I can't believe it's coming up already, but again, you'll see there, that was a, a get, that was a, just a, a gift. So what I did was that that opened up and it was a, you know, a football or something would come out or you know, it was 10% off a pitch, whatever that is. It was just, it was something that when customers were scrolling through the news feed, it blended in. And again, we promoted Women's, Women's Day, uh, International Women's Day with, we've obviously got a Women's League, etc. So it's tying in products with the opportunity. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of, me there, uh, kind of done. Um, thanks very much, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I'll awesome. pass over to you then. Yeah, uh, just a quick question on that last piece, actually. I, I, it's just, it's, it's really nice to see the sort of level of creativity that you guys bring in, and like the one you talked about earlier, where it was, um, I don't know what the hashtag was. You know, the hashtag National Dogs Day, and then linking that <laughs> to the football. <laughs> it's just a natural link when you say it like that, but it's, I guess it's not so easy to come up with the creative idea in the first place, but it's just, yeah, just really nice to see um, how creative you can be and running those sort of, you know, national uh, campaigns or like the centrally sort of created and managed content, but coupled with the local content as well. Just, yeah, uh, yeah really, really nice to see. It so, is really important. Uh, oh, really important you take those two minutes out just two minutes to sit down and look at those those tactical opportunities and if you just get six of you around the table and say that's the hashtag here's our product what have we what can we do that's all that's all, really all it takes is just five minutes of, of that that kind of group chat nice nice great stuff i mean thanks a lot curry i think um it was really really interesting i'm sure everyone else who's, who's joining agrees i'm just going to take a quick look so i think we've I know we're at 11.30 now, but I'm just going to take a quick look to see if we've got any questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, so if you, if you do have a question, please just submit it into the questions box. Um, I'm going to get started. I can see one that's come in. Hi, Corey. So one for you. <laughs> uh, how, how, do you how do you encourage your site pages to be posting different slash original content? So maybe a little bit to what we, we're just looking at there. Um, yeah, how do you encourage your site pages to be posting different slash original content, or is that not important for you? We encourage our centres to post original content different for each site, but it's difficult to do that and get them to tailor to their audiences. So it sounds like, I guess, yeah, how do you go about like trying to have different content at the local venues, which isn't too overlapping or too, yeah. too similar, I guess, is the question? Well, it's, it's coming back to that reporting aspect and that engagement scoring and saying to the, to the you know, all clubs, really, it doesn't need to be the bottom bottom performers to say, look, 
here's the top five clubs. This is what they're doing. And we'll take examples. So we'll have our, you know, a reporting that just is numbers, numbers, numbers. But then we also have uh, at the end of the week a we kind of fun social media update where um, we take great examples from across the estate and say, here's what's happening around your, your clubhouse. Here's what's happening around the business. Um, and hopefully that's uh, we send that out to, to all the clubs. All the clubs will then view that content and they can take some inspiration from that. And now mm. we will encourage them. Now, if we don't see any sort of change in numbers, we will sort of ask them or we'll say, is there any support needed? Is there anything we can do? Can we maybe post that content for you? Can you maybe, you know, it's more a case of, it's a more a supporting each other. It's not about that. I know I spoke about competition, but it's that fun element of it. But if you take that all aside, if there is clubs that are struggling to really find those opportunities or to replicate that content, that we say, right, okay, let's sit down together. How can we support you? Um, we can't support all 46 at the same time, but what we can do is we'll take a couple of clubs out, we'll support them. They'll get on their way, they'll start doing it. Great, thumbs up. Okay, there's another couple of clubs there that are struggling again. Okay, mm. let's. how can we help you? Here's the reports. Pull it through. And... Yeah, it's that fun internal element. Don't look at the competition. Don't compare yourself to the competition. Compare yourselves to each other. What are we all doing um, that's working? Because at the end of the day, it's our business. It's our model. It's our ta it's our um, customers. Yeah, makes sense. And then just not leaving people to it, like you said, so, sort of supporting each other, collaborating, yeah. I guess, to come up with new ideas, like what, what you could do differently, what you can do better. So actually, d did you... Um... I'm trying to think how long you've been running the uh, internal comparisons, but did you see a sort of before and after change, you know, from when you were uh, running the internal league tables, the internal competition? Um, yeah, I, um, I, th I think so, yeah. Um, I've not looked in a wee while, but we, ha we, we have seen a, a resurgence and content getting posted and just some really good, you know, just really great examples from some of the clubs that we never really seen much of coming mm -hmm. out of the shell and, and really posting some really good content from their customers mainly um, or from the guys that are coming to play football week in, week out. So it's it's, it's sort of giving them the boost because I, I think the, you know, the kind of feedback that we got was, I want to be on that table. How do I get on that table? Um, or, you know, now we're getting, you know, clubs that are, they post something that does really well. We've not seen it in because there's so much going on um, around us, and they're actually emailing saying, "Look, this is what we've done." So they get excited nice. about it, and that's what it's. Social should be fun. It shouldn't be yeah. um, used as a, a serious tool. Although you will, I, I, I use that term loosely. Sorry, it should <laughs> still be taken seriously, but have fun with it. You know, at the end of the day, that's that's what it's there for. So um, have fun with it. But um, yeah, well said. <laughs> All right, awesome. So. Um... If anyone else got any more questions, uh, please submit it now. I think that's, uh, it was just the one that we had actually in. So maybe it was, must have been crystal clear, Corey. Uh, everyone <laughs> that's good. It loud and clear, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. So I guess um, we can start to wrap up. So what I would say is thanks everyone for joining us today. It's been, I think it's been a great session. I, I, I'm sure you'll agree. Thanks a lot, Corey. So I'll let you in on a, a little secret. So Corey's actually on holiday this week. So please <laughs> just make sure you thank him by, you know, finding him on Twitter or at least um, reaching out afterwards uh, for taking sort of 30, 40 minutes out of his, out of his day uh, to join us today. We, we, we certainly we certainly appreciate it. Um, and also, yeah, please make sure you just, uh, you know, follow Crowd Control HQ, follow Goals um, and keep up to date, have a look at what they're, what they're posting, some of the content and get some ideas and inspiration uh, and things like that. And um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, thanks a lot again. Um, hope to see you on another webinar and thanks again, Corey, for, for your time. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.